overpopulation, overconsumption, and our environment. Once upon a time, there were less than 500 million people living on Earth. They were hunters and gatherers, but their lives were frail and unstable, and they lived half as long as we do now. Then, around 8,000 BC, mankind learned the art of agriculture, and we began to settle and gradually increase our reproductive and survival rates. By 1830, our population reached 1 billion people, and then came the Industrial Revolution, and while it had taken about 50,000 years to reach 1 billion people, it took less than 200 years for the population to skyrocket to 7.5 billion people. Our population continues to grow at an exponential rate of about 80 million people per year. That's a growth of about 200,000 people per day, 9,000 people per hour, or 150 people per minute. Our population size has nearly doubled since the 1970s, which means we've doubled our demand for food, water, space, electricity, natural resources, meats and fishes, grains and vegetation, the list goes on and on, yet Earth remains the same size and produces no more natural resources than it had when there were only 500 million people consuming them. To make matters worse, mankind is consuming larger quantities of these natural resources. These high demands result not only in collapsing fisheries, diminishing forest cover, depletion of fresh water systems, and the buildup of carbon dioxide emissions, which of course creates problems like global climate change, but it also contributes to resource conflicts and wars, mass migrations, famine, disease, and other human tragedies that tend to have a disproportionate impact on the poor and developing countries. We've advanced as species and now live longer and healthier lives. However, us not dying quite like we used to, we've also plagued the earth with an immense amount of people that act as parasites to our host, draining her of all life without thinking ahead to what our futures will look like when there is nothing left of her. Today, humanity uses the equivalent of 1.6 Earth's worth of resources. This overshoot is estimated to increase to two full Earth's worth of natural resources by 2030. The more people that reside on Earth, the more our ecosystems become strained in their efforts to support us. Still, even with a growing population, it's not impossible for us to change our ways and learn how to live within the means of one planet. But what can governments do with population sizes increasing beyond sustainability? Well, in the past, we've tried enforcing one-child policies in which violators faced heavy fines, forced sterilizations or abortions, or loss of jobs and benefits. We've tried bribing newlyweds to wait a few years before having kids, and disqualified people that had more than two children from holding public office. We've tried forced sterilizations on women after their second child without their consent or knowledge. And we even started this thing called the eugenics movement to limit the immigration of nationalities considered undesirable and require the sterilization of undesirable Americans, which were mostly people with disabilities, mental illnesses, or people living in poverty. But we don't really like to talk about that. Fact is, trying to force an immediate decline in population growth rate through unethical means was bound to fail. What actually works is education. Programs stressing the importance of family planning and providing contraceptives globally have become the most successful long-term stabilizer of overpopulation. Even societies that don't believe in contraception understand the need for family planning and stress the importance of breastfeeding, which is a natural contraceptive. In Africa, breastfeeding prevents about four births per woman. In Bangladesh, 6.5 births per woman. And in a study done in Chile, women who breastfed for six months reported no pregnancies while 72% of the women who bottle-fed got pregnant again. According to the UN's Department of Economic and Social Affairs, about 64% of married and cohabiting women currently use modern or traditional contraception. That's way better than the 36% who used protection in 1970. Family planning and education is working domestically as well as internationally. We can see its success in the decreasing population growth rates from 2.19% in 1963 to our current 1.13%. Unfortunately, even with growth rates on a steady decline, chances are the global population will reach between 9 and 11 billion people by the year 2100 before it levels off and stabilizes at the replacement level of two children for two parents. This means we'll probably reach the population level at which Earth can no longer sustain our basic survival demands like food and water. Mankind will very likely endure mass famine, starvation, and dehydration before our population levels off. But wait, aren't there like 3.5 billion acres of arable land on Earth that can produce 2 billion tons of grains per year and easily feed 10 billion people? <laughs> well, yes, but that would feed 10 billion vegetarians. 
If you consider the typical American diet, the same amount of land would only feed 2.5 billion omnivores because the rest of our vegetation would be dedicated to feeding our livestock. Yes, that's right. The majority of the food that we grow is fed to the animals that we eat. There are already 1 billion people starving on Earth, even though we grow enough vegetation to feed everyone. But that's not all. There's also a very short supply of fresh water. Only 3% of the earth on of the water on Earth is fresh. And of that fresh water, 70% is frozen, which means we can really only use about 1% of the water on Earth. And I gotta tell you, we're not doing so hot a job of making it last. While the need to irrigate agriculture accounts for about 70% of the global fresh water withdrawals, in the US, up to 60% of our irrigation demands go towards lawn care. So basically, there are 783 million people who don't have access to clean water, but we throw away 20 trillion gallons of it for green grass every year. But wait, there's more. Did you know that the world's richest 10% of the population consumes 60% of our rapidly depleting natural resources? I mean, it's pretty common sense that the wealthier people are, the more stuff they consume, and consequently, the more resources they use and more pollution they cause. But the unbelievable inequality of wealth spread across the globe makes it so that if the poorest 1 billion people on Earth were to suddenly disappear, it would have virtually no impact on global natural resource consumption and pollution. On the other hand, if the richest 700 million people on Earth pulled it with overconsumption and instead took only what is necessary for the average global standard of living, resource depletion and pollution would be cut in half. So what can we do? Well. Obviously, overpopulation isn't nearly as severe a problem without overconsumption. I mean, yes, we need to stabilize our global population with family planning, but we, the people living in capitalistic developed nations specifically, need to learn to decrease our consumption of Earth's resources. We need to resist the consumeristic urge telling us to constantly buy more stuff and produce more waste. And we need to find renewable alternatives to our demands for the sake of our future generations. Governments need to recognize ecological limits make them central to our decision making, and use human innovation to find new ways to live within the constraints of our planet. This means investing in eco-friendly technologies and green energy. It means taking individual action and creating public demand for businesses and policymakers to participate. Global population is growing continuously and inevitably, and will continue to do so for the next 100 years. If there is hope of sustaining 10 billion people on Earth by the year 2100, we need to do everything in our power to start changing our daily routines now. If we Americans reduce our consumption of meat by only 10%, we would save enough resources to feed 100 million hungry people. If we stopped our abuse of fresh water for lawn care, we could save 20 trillion gallons of water per year. And if we recycled all that is capable of being recycled, we could limit our waste by 75%. We have to educate our peers and our children and demand sustainable enforcement from our governments. Progress takes time, especially when it disturbs the convenience of our first world lifestyles. But it's not impossible. With a little bit of effort, we can ignite the change that we want to see in the world, save our future generations, and save our planet Earth.